We're getting new APUs from AMD, NVIDIA, we got details on the super launch and it's just as confusing as you want, and what I've been so excited for, Meteor Lake handhelds. Let's get into the hot news everybody, it's December 18th, 2023, it's a Monday, and we're going to dive in talking today about the new APUs that have been leaked from ASRock and ASUS on their motherboard setups, with them letting us know that we should expect the Ryzen 8000G series of APUs probably sometime early next year, and there's going to be a whole bunch of them to expect, including Ryzen 3 versions all the way up to a Ryzen 7 with 8 core 16 threads as well as 12 compute units of RDNA 3 and up to a 5.1 gigahertz clock speed which means that we're likely looking at very good integrated GPU gaming performance something on par with you know we've been seeing the 780M but with hopefully higher TDP coming in at 65 watts it can run a little faster than what we've seen in laptops or what we've seen in the handhelds like the RG Ally or the Lenovo Legion Go potentially giving people the option to have an 8700G to get the bare minimum gaming experience until they can buy a graphics card later on. Now, the only thing that remains to really be seen here is whether or not AMD is going to give this current generation PCI Express or if it's going to be like last time where it's still on PCI Express 3.0, it's still only eight lanes, so it's reduced. So even if you do upgrade to a new GPU, it actually is not the best experience that you could have if you just went with a not integrated GPU chip. We'll have to wait and see to find out. Hopefully sometime around CES is when we're expecting AMD to give us the full details on that. And I'm going to give you the full details on today's video sponsor. As you all may know, my family and I used to live in South Africa and we still have a team there. And while there's many great things about living abroad, one of the things that can be very frustrating is the use of internet back in your home country. Reese had to experience that while he was here and I experienced that when I was over there. But through the use of a VPN, we're able to access all of the content, all of the deals, and and all of the things that we're used to experiencing locally to keep everything happy and running smoothly. And that's why today's video is sponsored by NordVPN. NordVPN is the most popular VPN around and for good reason. Nord keeps it simple for you to use while still offering the most when it comes to safety features and convenient usage. Nord wants you to get the most out of your VPN service by being more than a VPN. That's why they offer round the clock 24 seven customer support, dedicated apps for all major platforms and the ability to protect six devices from one account. Additionally, Nord's threat protection shields help protect you from malware, trackers, and unwanted ads about the weird things that you looked at two weeks ago and now you can't escape it. Their dedicated IP also helps keep you away from annoying captchas and block lists. Obviously for Nord, privacy is also a major point of focus. Nord promises to never track or share what you do online while also making sure that your traffic is protected with robust encryption. Trying NordVPN for yourself is risk-free. Nord offers a 30-day money-back guarantee for all users, so if somehow you aren't happy with your service, you're free to cancel scot-free. And right now, Nord is offering four months free with a two-year plan. You can take advantage of this awesome offer by clicking the link in the description. Keep your internet browsing safe and secure with NordVPN. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. But let's talk more about good stuff that AMD is doing, and that is that they are releasing the FSR3 source code to GPU open, which means that developers, in case they want to get their hands on how AMD does their frame generation, FSR3 upscaling, it is now available on GitHub for people to be able to actually use, which is just one of the best things about AMD as a company. They have continuously released open standards for a lot of the technologies that they've developed. Whether it be FreeSync or things like Mantle, AMD has continuously pushed the boundaries on how they can make the gaming industry better, whereas Nvidia has always made it proprietary and figured out a way to monetize it. But always, typically, NVIDIA edges AMD out on usability because of, you know, capitalism making it better. But you love to see those moves from AMD, and you don't like to see a more confusing launch from NVIDIA when it comes to the Super Series. We're expecting these to get announced on January 8th at CES, and it turns out that it's going to be a little bit convoluted. So not only are we going to get the announcement January 8th, but there's going to be RTX 4070 Super Unboxing Embargo later Later that afternoon and then on the 16th that's when reviews can go live for the MSRP versions and then non MSRP versions the ones that are a little bit more overclocked or more expensive can then get their reviews the following day when they're also available to purchase and then the 4070 Ti has the same structure the 23rd of January is the MSRP reviews the 24th of January is non MSRP and sales and then the 30th will go for the 4080 super and then the 31st is when that you get the rest of it it's all available at that point but it did 
did look like there might be a 4090 Super becoming available with a European retailer listing a bunch of cards known as the RTX 4090 Super at a price point of just over 2,000 euro. But according to video cards and several other leakers, this is just them putting something wrong on the internet. This is not supposed to be real. As far as everybody knows, Nvidia is not planning on launching an update to the RTX 4090. That will still be the flagship. The only change for the 4090 is the 4090D that's going to be launching in China due to the trade embargo restrictions. But while you might be looking at the Super Series thinking you want to pick one of those up, I am looking at MSI and the RTX 4060 and thinking I might want to pick one of these up just because it's freaking cute. The RTX 4060 Cyclone coming out from MSI and it is an old school heatsink that you would expect on something from like the Radeon HD 6000 days or like 8000 GT series of Nvidia cards. This is something that is a nice throwback. I like the gold and black design very much looks like a Power Ranger. I am excited by this. But speaking of old things that are getting updated, it turns out that Google is not shutting down the ability to transfer your Stadia controller from being just wireless over to Bluetooth. They had a conversion tool that was going to expire at the end of this month. It was only a couple weeks away that you could update your Stadia controller, but then with no press release or anything, they just slip that deadline a further year so now you have until December 31st 2024 in order to convert your much desired Stadia controller from wireless mode over to Bluetooth mode in case you're so interested but maybe Reese can save us a little bit of money on current gen controllers so that you don't have to worry about that although the Stadia controller was effectively free since they gave refunds to everybody who purchased one. Yo welcome back to Yifty Deals bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet and as you can see I'm currently visiting family for the holidays but the deals don't stop so we won't either starting off today we have this King Spec Gen 3 NVMe M.2 SSD, specifically the one terabyte version for only $37.99, making it $64 off. It's not the fastest SSD out there, being only Gen 3 speeds, but if you're still on a hard drive, this is a great little upgrade if you want something. But then next up, we have the Corsair K65 Pro Mini, which is a 65% Optum mechanical keyboard for only $89.99, making it $40 off. And then lastly, we have this Antec Dark League DF600 Flux Mid Tower ATX case for only $89.99, with the included promo code making it $30 off but don't worry it also comes with five 120 millimeter fans and a fan controller hub and with that the deals are done you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news this is really weird to do sitting down thanks Reese. turns out that Apple has been having a bad deal all along when it comes to how Apple Pay works they are now being hit with an antitrust lawsuit with regards to how they work with Visa and MasterCard using Apple Pay according to the lawsuit it's because they are forcing merchants to pay artificially higher fees for credit and debit transactions and that Apple struck unlawful agreements with Visa and MasterCard to refrain from competing with the two companies and that Apple was receiving very large and ongoing cash bribes essentially because Apple was taking a portion of every transaction from Visa and MasterCard which they were consenting to pay Apple so that Apple would not run its own independent point of sale transaction payment network so instead of Apple becoming a company like Visa, MasterCard, American Express, or Discover, they decided to ride on the backs of Visa and MasterCard, and then they got money as a kickback for not deciding to compete. Now, this is being leveraged against them from Mirage Wine and Spirits in Illinois on behalf of all merchants in the United States that accepted Apple Pay as a method of payment at the physical point of sale. So according to them, they feel like Apple is doing something that is unlawful and is antitrust and bad for the consumer overall. We will keep you updated on how this lawsuit plays out in the court of law here on hot news but apple did just settle a class action lawsuit over family sharing for 25 million dollars and in case you qualify for this you can get a 50 dollar paycheck for that and this lawsuit happened because apple rolled out family sharing where they kind of made it seem like every app on the app store if you purchase that you could share it with a family member up to six different people turns out it was only specific apps that you could do that with and it was also based on the app developer whether or not they wanted that to happen and so it was ruled that this was deceptive marketing by apple and now they have to pay out and ByteDance, the company that owns TikTok, is going to have to pay out for their own large language model because it turns out that they've been using ChatGPT to make its own. According to reports, OpenAI found that ByteDance was using their GPT models to train its own AI model and that they are no longer welcome to do so, which makes a whole lot of sense. But Intel says the exact opposite when it comes to their own company, their Intel Foundry Services, which is how they actually
actually produce the chips. Companies like AMD and Nvidia are known as fabless companies because they contract with a fabricator to make their chips, but Intel actually makes everything in-house. And when asked again whether or not they were going to be spinning off or selling off their foundry system, like AMD did back in the, I think it was mid-2000s, they had Global Foundry and then they got rid of it, Intel says, no, we're going to keep holding on to it. And we're also supposed to be holding on to some new frame generation tech from Intel known as Extra SS or Extras. That's what in Intel's going to be calling their frame generation technique. This was found in a paper from SIGGRAPH on the Joint Spatial Super Sampling and Frame Extrapolation paper. And essentially it is Intel's version of either fluid motion frames from AMD or DLSS3 frame gem from Nvidia. However, it uses a slightly different method where they wouldn't have to necessarily use a latency counteractor like AMD has with Anti-Lag Plus or Nvidia has with Reflex because of the way they use it doesn't necessarily add as much latency to the entire operation. So technically it could be a better native right out of the box solution as opposed to AMD and Nvidia's. But again, this is just a paper that Intel put out for extras. So we'll have to find out how usable it is when and if it launches on their cards, the current generation or battle mage as we're expecting. But the current generation of Meteor Lake laptops is very exciting. A lot of praise was given to them when it came to both their integrated graphics performance as well as their multi-threaded performance. They're kind of bad when it comes to single core, but Intel had to make compromises to get somewhere. But this is what I've been expecting. We now have our first announced handheld that's going to be using a Meteor Lake chip, and that is the One X Player X1. Now, this company is calling it a 3-in-1 laptop PC, but it's not that at all. It's a large handheld, 11 inches, 120 hertz refresh rate, uh, has the design of an actual handheld, but has the touchscreen that you would expect from a tablet. It also will have an attachable keyboard that you can use, but you can see right here, it looks like it has sections for you to connect some sort of handle, some sort of controller that allows you to play it. And it's supposed to be coming with a Core Ultra 7 chip. And additionally, it's gonna be able to support Oculink external GPUs so that it's better for a desk setup altogether. So this looks very exciting. I want more competitors in the handheld region, even if Asus and Lenovo decide that they want to make an Intel equivalent of their ally or their Lenovo Legion Go. I would love to see that as well. More competition in this space. The One X Player X1 looks neat. It's probably going to be very expensive considering the size, the refresh rate, everything that they're adding into it, but it is a good start and I want to see more companies roll that out. And you might want to see me do more comment response, so I'll do a few right now. Randomness says, it's nice to see Intel and AMD lighting a fire under Apple by bringing x86 close to the efficiency of ARB. I'm now really curious how the Snapdragon Elite stacks up in the coming years. It is one of the best times in terms of competition on the CPU side for gamers. GPU side has been a little stagnant, like the 40 series is good, the RX 7000 series is good, but you have to pay so much for it. It's a difficult conversation, but we're also in the place where there is more choice than ever, and it's it's a good time to be a PC gamer if you can afford it. X Station Playbox Switcheroo says, I got the categorically unviable shirt in today, the red version. I've gotten a few laughs and likes from my roomie and a couple co-workers. Love it. Kyler's came in over the weekend. He'll probably be wearing it when I get back from my trip. We do have a long hospital visit this week for my son, so I'm going to be embarking on that and trying to get hot news done to close out this year strong. So things will be a little messy this week. Tomorrow's episode should still be in office, but then the rest of them will either be from a hotel room or a break room in a hospital cafeteria. I'll keep you updated on that. But I gotta go prep for that. I'll see you back here for more hot news tomorrow, my friends.